Hello and welcome back to Cloud Native Ticks. My name is Robert and I'm joined again with Matt. Matt, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me back. And today we're talking about K3S and K3, K8, excuse me. What's the difference? And so Matt, I wanna start off with, what is the big difference between K3s and K8s? Uh, the big difference is, well, K8 stands for Kubernetes, right? And mm -hmm. Kubernetes is a platform. You can get it from Kubernetes. And there's different distributions of Kubernetes, right? Um, you've, we've got RKE. We've got RKE2. There, there's just a bunch of different distributions out there. And that's what K3S is. It is just a distribution of Kubernetes with some things tweaked for special characteristics. So it's not really one versus the other. It's more K3S is a distribution of Kubernetes, just like OpenSUSE or SLE is a distribution of GNU Linux. Okay. And we get this question, we see this question quite frequently, especially on Twitter and YouTube. We get this a lot, even in our community, is, is it K3S versus K8s or no? No, it's really not one versus the other. It's kind of when do I pick the right time to use the K3S distribution, right? Okay. And so it's not one or the other. You don't want to necessarily take a heavyweight distribution out to the edge, but mm -hmm. K3S, well, you can take to the edge because you can go lightweight there. Okay. So you wouldn't, that being said, we wouldn't move K8s to the edge. It's probably not the best use case, right? Uh, probably not. And, th and that's really where you want to get with your distributions. Look for where a distribution sweet spot is, right? Um, there's some distributions that uh, have certified versions of cryptography libraries that you might need. And so it has mm -hmm. a sweet spot there for people who have those compliance cases. And K3S has its sweet spots. And a lot of times where you need to have lower resource consumption, uh, it runs really well in those constrained spaces because instead mm -hmm. of using etcd, for example, it uses an SQLite database and it can go really, really tiny on its on its resource needs because it's using less. And that, that's really useful at places like out at the edge or maybe on a desktop because we used it as a component when we're building Rancher desktop. Okay. And so that being said, K3S is not just for the edge then? It's not necessarily just for the edge because you can configure it to work with other SQL databases. You could work with MySQL or Postgres. And so there's other places it can fit. It's really got its sweet spot that people are finding at the edge, but there's other places and other ways that you could use it as well. Okay. And picking one of the, over the other is just one of those where you're looking at, if I'm going to need a smaller footprint and one versus the traditional, is that the way you would pick one over the other? That's the way. And, and and it's not just Kubernetes, for example. I mean, there's different distributions of Kubernetes. There's, you know, we have RKE2. Um, mm -hmm. And you might want to pick that versus K3S, depending on what your requirements are. Um, it's really going to depend on, does this distribution meet your needs? Now, if you're just looking to pick up a generic distribution, you know, you can go get just generic Kubernetes. If you need a small one, then I would suggest going with K3S instead, just because of the less resource consumption. That, that's mm -hmm. kind of a, an easy way to pick it. But if you've got more requirements, then it's really a distribution question. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Matt, again, thank you for your time. And we'll see the rest of you in the community.